So for some reason I feel weird that the answers are on here, even though I emailed these to you. So I'm going to block off some things and sh not show you the answers, even though you have them. Um, but I kind of want you to do it more to, so that you're listening and not reading what I'm, I've written. Um, but there's a couple things I want you to take a look at that we ne haven't necessarily had a chance to look at So in class. But A through E, like you should be able to do those. Um, and if you can't, like you want to really make sure in your journals that you are writing to me about what it is that you were able to do and what it is that's holding you up. But down at the bottom, F, uh, G, and H are a little bit trickier. And what I want to do is I want to take a second and talk about it. And so it asks you here, what type of bias do you observe in CPI and corresponding inflation rates you generated above? Well, what I want to focus your attention on is look what we did here to the price of pens from 2002 to 2004 and notice the price of pencils here and I want you to think about the relationship between pens and pencils and imagine for yourself if the price of pens went from 5 to 20 what you would do uh, as a buyer and notice what we did though um, because we took a hundred and we used this constant quantity of a hundred pens for all years even though we know that the price went from 5 to 20 it went up by four times the price of pens increased by four a multiple of four that's a big increase yet we assume they kept buying the same amount of pens that's an assumption that we make with CPI is that people always buy the same basket of goods they buy the same number of pens, the same number of pencils. But I hope that in your head you're thinking to yourself, I'm not buying $20 pencils. No siree bobbity. Uh, even though CPI is assuming that you would. So that's one thing that you want to think about when you're thinking about this F question here. I'm going to pause for a second. So I'm covering this up because uh, I don't want you to read this while I'm talking. I want you to listen and follow along. So G asks you if you had a cost of living clause in your wage contract. This is what a COLA is. I put it on the board like right before the announcement was coming on because I knew it was going to come up here. Um, but a cost of living adjustment means that you have an agreement in your contract that says that your salary will go up every year in line with the prices. Well, that means that your salary is lining up with what measure? What measures the value of the price change from year to year? Your inflation rate. So if you have 2% inflation, you're going to get a 2% uh, raise according to your contract in this uh, example. And so it asks you, based on the CPI calculated above, would your standard of living likely de increase, decrease, or stay the same during the years 2002 to 2004? Okay, I'm going to pause again because I want you to look at H now. They're very similar questions, but different. And I want to talk to you a little bit. Okay. So now, notice H is very, very similar, almost virtually the same. You still have the cost of living adjustment in your contract. But here, you're only going to consume pens. Regardless of what CPI says, you're going to uh, consume only pens. So the key here is going to be for you to think about what your behavior is if you stick to the pen consumption versus changing it. So if you change it, that's going to be how you answer G, but H is you stick hardcore to the $20 pens, how you're going to feel, all right? And hopefully that gives you a little bit of a hint to try and handle those two questions, which are tricky, um, but thought-provoking at the same time, and may provide good stuff for your journal, all right? Uh, hang on, I'm going to check and see if I want to tell you, talk to you about anything else. I don't think I have anything else for you, really. Um, again, you don't have to do number three. Uh, but you should be able to do two. Um, e and F on two will be very tough for you, but uh, if you can do A through E really well on two, you'll be in good shape. Uh, so two is going to deal all with your minimum wage and your CPI, and so you can kind of see how the real value of the minimum wage changes from year to year. As you can see here from 1981 to 1989, eight years, it didn't change, but notice what happened to the price level here. It changed quite a bit. That should tell you something about the value of that minimum wage um, in that era. All right. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. It's always a pleasure. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen.